Hi everyone, it is I, Maggie Elram, and today I'm going to be discussing spirit vessels with you. A spirit vessel is something that actually houses or contains a spirit inside of it. They can be anything from skulls, jars, uh, bones, actual physical houses that look like doll houses, pretty much anything that you would like to use to house a spirit within that can be a spirit vessel. So there's a lot of different reasons why a person would choose to create a spirit vessel or choose to house the spirit itself. And I think one of the biggest reasons is just because it's kind of polite, you know, if you have a relationship with a spirit from the other realm or with a certain entity, it's kind of nice to create a little home for it to live in, you know, instead of just like summoning it back and forth all the time. I know it, it sounds kind of weird whenever you say it out loud like that, but um, that's the way that it actually works in my brain. So if you are a witch or a practitioner that actually has a pretty strong relationship with the spirit, and I definitely would recommend doing this only if you have a very strong relationship with the entity that you're working with, then um, I think the next step in your relationship would to be would be to create a spirit house or spirit vessel for that entity. That way, the spirit that you're working with has a physical place to reside in within your own home, and it acts as kind of an anchor for them. They have a somewhere that they can go quickly to in between realms without having to be summoned or called or without using too much of their own energy. So like I said, it's just kind of a nice thing to do for them if it's, you know, someone that you're working with a lot. As I said before, if this is something that you're interested in, there can be many different things that you use as the actual vessel itself. Um, the really popular hot commodity these days is using animal skulls or actual human skulls. Um, it's not entirely, it's not really necessary to use skulls or uh, real life bones, but like I said, it's really popular and to each their own. I have bones, I'm not going to hate on it, so. And I think that the, I think the reasoning behind using bones and things of that nature is that uh, the bones still kind of retain that that residue that life leaves behind. You know, it is what is left behind after we die, after all living beings die. We still have those bones that are left behind. So it is, like those are already kind of an anchor in themselves. So it just makes sense to use those to house uh, other entities or spirits within. Now I would say, you know, if you're using animal bones, um, I never like, I always invite the animal spirit that lives within it to stay there if it wants to. I'm not gonna like force another animal out of its own fucking skeleton because that's really rude. And um, and that's totally cool. If they wanna stay, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And you can house more than one spirit in one vessel, so that's totally okay. Now if bones are something that you're really interested in, if you find that kind of gruesome or dark or you know, if you find that it's too cruel and doesn't really go along with your practice, another really popular way of uh, housing spirits is within bottles or jars. And most often, people fill the bottles or jars with different types of herbs, maybe graveyard dirt, or things that are associated uh, with spirits and kind of honoring spirits. And again, it kind of reminds me of how, you know, plants were once a living thing, and now you have you know, the dead parts of the plants, you know, after it's passed away, and it's what's remaining, it's what is remaining after uh, its life is over, basically. It still has that life energy within it because you have these dry parts of these plants and resins and that type of thing, so it kind of makes sense. It's kind of like the bones of a plant, if you would. And then if you want to be super fancy, you can get, like, bird houses or doll houses and actually decorate them with, like, comfortable things uh, that the spirit may enjoy. This is something, I, as I was uh, researching this video, I found that this is really popular in Thailand where they practice, uh, I think it's Shintoism. Please forgive me if I'm incorrect. But they build these very elaborate houses for their ancestor spirits to live in and so that they might visit them and you know, give them offerings and really celebrate them in the afterlife. So once you've kind of like determined what kind of vessel and everything it is that you're going to use for your uh, spirit house, then the next part is kind of like activating it. How do I do this? How do I actually make this a home for the spirit to live in? And um, I think the easiest answer, 
the easiest answer is to say, you know, with ritual. I'm not one to always recommend rituals to people because I try to simplify my practice as best as I can because that is what works for me. But I find that something that is as important as like making a house for somebody else or somebody that I'm working with, you know, it is good to dedicate that time and uh, energy to making a ritual for this actual act. And like any other type of ritual that you're ever going to do, you always want to begin with uh, cleansing and consecrating the object that you're going to be using. And you can do this in uh, any way that you're used to do that any way that you're used to doing this. You know, you kind of want to get all that residual icky stuff out of there so that the spirit has like a really nice place to live whenever they actually enter the vessel. You could make an make an incense blend particularly for that spirit and kind of bathe the vessel in the smoke from that incense. You can create an oil to anoint the vessel with. Um, this is something that I like to do. I enjoy creating anointing oils because I can't it's hard for me to burn loose incense all the time because I live in an apartment building and I have a, a fire alarm in here, like a fire, a smoke detector, that's what they're called, in my room, so I don't want to like smoke up the place too much. Um, so most of the time I'll create a, a ritual oil specifically for that type of purpose to anoint the vessel with. So once you've kind of covered all of your bases with like the preparation of the vessel itself, the next step will be to, you know, open that ritual space and actually form the connection from the vessel to the spirit or entity that you're going to invite into it. And, you know, there's no specific spell. You can uh, do your own research and find, you know, whatever way you feel uh, fits your practice the best. The whole entire point of the ritual is to create that bridge from the vessel that you're using to the spirit itself. So you want to think of it as kind of a portal, a way that the spirit can go back and forth in between the worlds and easily have that vessel that is anchored to our physical realm. And I would suggest doing this through very heavy meditation, through very heavy visualization and trance work if that's something that you're comfortable with. You know, this is something that might take you quite some time. You may have to do it, you know, more than one time. You may not be successful the first time. And I know a lot of people ask, you know, how do I know? Like, how do I know if the spirit is in this object? And I can't tell you an exact way, but I think that, like, you will know whenever the object is full. It will have, like, a full feeling to it. It will have more of a presence than just a inanimate object. It will be, it will become, and it will feel more animated to you. You know, it's, I'm, I'm not saying it will, it's going to start talking to you and walking around, but it will have more of um, that feeling. Kind of like the feeling that you get when you're sitting in a room and somebody like walks into the doorway but they don't say anything and you can kind of feel that there's another person there. Like that kind of feeling. And I know that those feelings are subtle, but as witches, those are the type of energies that we work on noticing more of. So... You know, if you've been a good witch and you're practicing your meditations and all that kind of stuff, then you'll be able to tell once the vessel has been filled with the spirit itself. And then, um, once you've completed that part of the ritual, you know, close your ritual any way that you see fit, however you're used to doing it, and then you have your very own spirit vessel. And it's very important to uh, remember that this is kind of a physical representation of the spirit or the friend that you're working with. Um, so you want to make sure that you keep the vessel clean. You want to treat it very lovingly and with a lot of respect. You want to, um, you know, you might want to give offerings to it. You may want to uh, feed it or, uh, you know, anoint it with oils regularly or light candles or burn incense for it. Whatever it is that uh, fits your practice, you want to make sure that you continue doing that so that the space remains open and that bond remains really strong because I think that you know if it is something that you start to neglect then the bond will kind of fade and it's gonna get kind of a fuzzy connection if it's not something that you focus your energy on because you were the one that created that portal you were the one that opened that and you know unlike popular TV and that kind of stuff I don't think these are things that can just stay open all the time especially if you're the one that opened it you know, it's not gonna, you're not fucking tearing a hole and 
another dimension. You know, you're you are creating that bond between the object and the spirit itself. So you have to maintain it. It requires, you know, maintenance, like everyday maintenance. Um, I myself, I don't have any spirit vessels that are active right now. I have made some in the past, but I think it is something uh, that I'm going to be doing shortly since we do have the uh, lovely Halloween holiday approaching us. So, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. As always, I will tell you to do your own research and, you know, make sure that you're allowing yourself that chance to discover this information on your own because I never want to appear as an authority on any type of subject. I always on any type of subject, I always encourage you to do your own research and find out your own truth because that is part of the fun. Like that is the fun of it all is learning how to do something. And to me, that is part of the magic itself is the build up to doing the actual ritual. That's the most fun part. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And I love you guys. You have a great day.